All right, guys, we're back with this uh, Clinton call off this 1954, I believe it was 54 Clinton engine. It was a C700. And what we have right here is our original points, a call for our points. So we got our armature right here, like on all calls. We got our just our ignition wire that goes to our spark plug. Okay. And then you have on these coils a copper wire that comes out most time it don't have no sleeve on it or nothing and it's screwed in with a screw to your armature right here uh, grounding the secondary coil to your engine so all of this your secondary coil in here and all your armature all this is ground to your engine making a complete circuit all the way back to where your points are at to where they close Okay, and that secondary, this secondary one ground is open like this until your points close, okay? Okay, we had another wire coming out of here that is your primary, and that goes to your points, all the way down to your points, okay? As your magnet goes past here, you have a north and, pal a north and south pole that goes around it, which causes like an alternating current. Well, that current builds up in your primary coil and goes all the way down your primary wire to your points and condenser. And that charge gets built up into that condenser, okay? Well, whenever those points close, your ground and that your primary wire completes the circuit, allowing the charge from your condenser to make its way up the primary and spark out your ignition wire right here okay so what i did was i was i was like well i can't buy a coil for this i can't even find a new old stock so i knew that i have bought uh new coils for older tecumseys so i knew they had some out that was round like this and you can actually buy these for tecumseys and they will most likely work better than what i, I ended up doing because it might be exact same size as this. But I was in a pinch and was uh, trying to figure out a way, uh, basically was experimenting to see if I can make a call or fix this one to work with points. So what I did was uh, uh, unscrewed my secondary wire right here, and then I pressed the armature out of here. Let me see if I can press this out right here. Okay, and so I pressed this out of here. And then what I was left with was just my armature. So and it's, don't mind this solder right here. I'll get to that here in a minute. So I was looking at it, I was like, that looks really familiar. I think I have a new coil in stock that has a square hole in it like that. So I went into my stock and actually had a coil for, I believe this was a Kawasaki engine. It is one of those Chinese ones on Amazon. Uh, it might have came in on an uh, engine somebody had and they put it on it and uh, I went back with an OEM because I very rarely buy stuff like this unless it's for like an old rebuild that I'm just going to set on the shelf after I get it running but so I got this and I got my armature for my Clinton coil and it at first it was not fitting right I mean the square was it was just off by probably 20 thousandths of an inch so what I ended up doing was one of the laminates on here, there's a, there was a metal dowel that goes through the middle. Well, you can see it on here on the back. You see that dowel right there on both sides? And it goes all the way through all your laminates. What I did was I got my grinder and I grinded the end of that dowel so I can pull one laminate off. Now, before you do this, you might want to try this. So, I've got my coil right here, my new coil, and I pressed it off. Let's see if I can get off my fingers since I've had it off already. Yep, there we go. Okay. All right, let's see. All right, and there's the one off the new one. All right. So this is what it looks like. Very, now the circular part of it is exactly right. It's the exact same size. The only difference is where our ignition coil comes out, I have this bump right here. So as I was making this, I was like, will this affect 
or will anything hit this under my flywheel? So with my fingers crossed, I uh, manufactured this and put it together and uh, worked with it on my engine until I figure out which way I wanted the coil to be. Because it's a square. You're going on a square armature here and this armature is screwed in. So it could go like this. Armature could go, the coil could go like that. The coil could go like this where the it's closer to the bottom right side or go up to the top. Well, I ended up going with it coming out the top because it was too close to the body of the housing of my um, back plate. And then, of course, it gave me enough room that I could pull my wire around like this and down, which I've, you've seen that in my previous video. This is just to show you how I did this. Okay, so what, what I did was, how did that wire get there? On this new coil, you had terminals sticking out here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's your, kill, your kill wire hooks into it. That's all, that's all this is right here, is a regular coil with your kill wire that plugs in. Well, let me get back to this first. Before you pull this laminate off, this square in here, you might want to get uh, just a square file and file this out, because that's just plastic. Just file it out slowly until this fits in. You're not gonna to want to go too, too deep because you might get into the coil, but you might be able to file that out enough that you don't have to pull one of your laminates off, okay? All right, but because I didn't do that and I was pressing it, it busted out the plastic on the back of this coil, which luckily it didn't get into the coil at all, but it did expose where my this pin was soldered in. And let me get another coil to show y'all if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so you see, this is a standard coil, and you have your kill, the, the pin here that your kill wire goes to. And all that is doing is cutting off the primary uh, winding in here, and it's cutting the engine off. Uh, they just put everything into here now, instead of with points and stuff, okay? So, what I did was I soldered a wire to here, and I'm going to uh, get epoxy and fill this in so that's real nice and neat. And then I just have my primary wire coming out, okay? Well, on this coil, there uh, was a metal tin right here that's com coming out of the coil that was touching this right here so it grounded out for your secondary, okay? Your older style has a wire coming out for secondary. See, right here, it had a wire that come out for your secondary. Well, these new coils don't have a wire for secondary. The secondary is actually a piece of metal coming out of secondary winding, and it's in this square right here, and it just touches the center of your armature here and grounds out your secondary. Hope I'm making sense, guys. Okay, so what I did, I fitted my coil armature in there, okay? And then right here, you can see, I ground this down real good. And then I soldered that metal tab to my armature, completing my, connecting my secondary winding. Once that was complete, I ran my wire to my points, hooked everything up the way it was, and turned the engine over, and lo and behold, it fired. So, this is a hot tip for y'all trying to build these Clinton engines. I'll put up the part number for this coil that I got online because I know this does work. I know it fits. Uh, this Clinton 7, let's see, the Clinton C700, it fits perfect. You have to finagle the wire just a little bit, but you can look in my video that I have up on my Clinton rebuild on this C700 and see how I have this stuff ran on here. Um, but yeah, we can uh, successfully say that we can make a coil for a Clinton engine out of a new coil now and turn it into a points coil. So I hope this helps somebody out and remember to solder that uh, metal tab coming out of your coil to your armature uh, so that completes that circuit. And I had to grind it down and then I had to put uh, I put 
I put brazing flux after I ground that down a little bit. I put brazing flux on it because the regular solder wasn't wanting to hold. I put brazing flux on where I ground that down and then just did a 50 50 solder and then that held real good. But once I get this back together uh, for good, I'm going to epoxy this with some two part epoxy, get that nice and neat. And then once I get my, make sure that my everything's ground right here, I'll use my multimeter meter and I'll put one in on my armature and I'll put one in on the tab coming out of the back right here. And if it's the circuit's complete and good, then I'm going to uh, most likely drip some Loctite uh, glue down in here so this will stay forever. Cause I mean, this will be in this engine way past my life. All right, guys, I hope this helped y'all out.